Today we are beginning ES2120 Dynamics at Northwest College. Uh, and so we're going to go over class procedures today. We're going to go over the syllabus. I'm going to let you know what's expected of you and uh, answer any questions that you have. Good morning. How are you today? Logan, I have a syllabus for you here. And I told the other members of the class I am recording the lecture. So uh, I'll try not to record your image unless I let you know ahead of time. But if you speak, we'll hear your voice. All right, so there you go. So I'm giving that as a, uh, as a bit of information to your on-site classmates. This class is a dual online and face-to-face -face course. Uh, and so we currently have 11 students in class, not all of whom live in Powell. So for some of you, this will be face-to-face. Uh, -face, and for some of you, it will be uh, over the internet. And I will record all of my lectures so that in the event that you're not able to come or you get a better offer, uh, you don't have to be here and you'll still be able to keep caught up. So what we're going to do first is to go over our syllabus. But before I get started with that, I'm going to switch uh, over to the, the feedback from our uh, student portal. So this as a faculty portal looks a little different than your student portal, but the important thing is, is that if you go to my.nwc.edu over on the right hand side, you'll see the Moodle logo and then the courses that you are taking underneath it. So all the material for our class is going to be held on the Dynamics uh, Moodle page and I've got it divided up not by weeks but by modules. So the first bit is general stuff. We have a syllabus and a homework template that we'll talk about today. And then the next would be the kinematics of particles. So the lecture that I'm doing today will go here under introductory stuff. Then beginning Friday, I'll lecture and I'll link to the YouTube videos underneath here. Uh, the first thing is the YouTube videos are very reliable, but I have to rely on a processing, uh, a processing organization to put them up. So sometimes it can take as much as a day. Uh, so in the event that we have a lecture on say Friday, it may not go up till Monday, which would be a worst case scenario, but I will post them as soon as I am able to. So, um, so we we're always on the same page. So what we're going to do today is go over the syllabus. If you're here in class, uh, personally, I've given you a copy of this, but basically these are, this is what the class is going to run like what you can expect and how you're going to get the grade that you want. Which, in a class like Dynamics, if you go through the elements and uh, you do the four things that I say are always like the golden rules of, of being in a classroom, which I think engineering students tend to know these things already, but I'm bringing them up anyway, but there are four things. Uh, come to class, do your homework, take your quizzes and exams, and if those things don't work for you, come talk to your teacher. And that will get you through everything. In a class like this, um, I don't think I've ever had a dynamics class where everybody got an A, but I've had dynamics classes where everyone's gotten an A or a B. So not every single time, but that's really exciting to me, so I'm not looking for a curve. If you all get A's, that will just be a happy thing for all of us. So basically some of the things, uh, this is a dual, uh, these are cross-listed. We have section one, uh, which is held, it says Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon, but it's really 11, so I've got to fix that right away. Uh, and then we have the internet section. Um, my name is Astrid Northrup. I think I know everybody here, so that's a good thing. Uh, my office is just right down the hall in SM 117, which is inside of the secretary's office. I do have office hours that I've posted on my door, but I also am here a lot. So if you need to see me, if I'm in my office, please feel free to stop by. And if you need to see me at a time when you want to make sure that I'm available, just send me an email and I'll make sure that I'm available to, to visit with you at that time. The best way to get a hold of me is through email. You can call, but our office phones are kind of wonky sometimes. So uh, sometimes we don't have access to our emails. Like I get emails from April sometimes, and I don't even know, or voicemails from April. So, uh, so anyway, if you need to talk to me, voicemail is not a really good way, but uh, email's super. So what do we do in Dynamics? Well, Dynamics is one of three basic engineering courses, Statics, Dynamics, and Mechanics of Materials, all which deal with vector mechanics. So 
Dynamics is basically things that move or more specifically things that accelerate. Although we do look at things that move with constant velocity as well. Um, but it all comes out of Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. We cut that up so fine by the end of this class, you will know so much about that law. Uh, but anyway, this is the portion of engineering mechanics that deals with the analysis of the geometry of motion, which is known as kinematics, and also uh, force-driven motion, which is kinetics. So kinematics and kinetics together equal dynamics. The prerequisite for this class is uh, co actually co-requisite of Calc 2 and Physics 1 or statics is also another, another entree into this class. So what we're going to do over the course of this class, we're going to gain factual knowledge and terminology uh, regarding the, rel the relationship between forces and motion and the geometry of motion. And we're going to learn to solve classical, or classical dynamics problems. So just like in other classes you've had, there are certain types of problems, like if you've had statics, weights hanging from pulleys are like a classic type of a problem. There are certain types of problems that you're going to see in classes of advanced dynamics if you're a mechanical engineer or in other classes um, and just sort of problems that embody ways of thinking about the world. Uh, so we'll study those as well. Um, the topics we're going to talk about rectilinear, curve, linear, and plane motion. So if you guys are good with different uh, coordinate sets, we'll be, you'll, you'll be happy, and if not, you'll get better with them. So uh, kinematics and kinetics, then we'll also do energy, momentum, angular momentum, impulse, and impact. We'll talk about acceleration of forces, instantaneous centers of motion. Um, and we also talk a little bit about mechanical vibration, which is extraordinarily important, especially to mechanical engineers. And uh, also, we'll talk about orbital mechanics. Uh, so orbital mechanics actually is derived from a set of equations known as Kepler's laws, and uh, there's some really interesting applications to angular momentum, so we'll study it. We sort of study it backward from the way the book does it. The book sort of takes angular momentum as a large thing and then narrows down into orbital mechanics, and I kind of like to do it the opposite way. I like to start with orbital mechanics and build up, so it'll, but it's all, it's all there for you. So the text that we're going to use is Beer and Johnson, um, and there are two different ways that this textbook comes. One of them is as a combined statics and dynamics text, or just the dynamics text separate from the statics book. And either one is fine. I'm using the 11th edition. If you, this is not the most recent edition, so it should be available not only at the bookstore, but through um, Amazon or other booksellers. And that makes it a lot cheaper. The original book is several hundred dollars. So I would prefer to use the same material for quite a bit less money if we can do that. So that's sort of our plan. Um, and I did, yeah, I put up the 11th edition. If you have access to a 10th edition, uh, just let me know. The text is going to be nearly identical. Um, the problems may be a little different, so you might want to just take a picture of the homework problems, but you'll be able to do the homework problems from the 11th edition, which will be the required uh, problems, using my videos and using this textbook, so using whatever textbook you have. So you may have to find access to those, to those problems. Uh, the grading is based on a midterm, a two-hour midterm, which is proctored, a two-hour final, which is proctored, and homework, which is worth 20% of your grade. So the midterm is worth 40%, and the final is worth 40%. Uh, if you're here on campus, we'll set a time when you can come and we'll just have a final just like in a regular class. If that's not available to you, you can either, uh, if you're out in Cyberland, you can either get a proctor from uh, a testing center at your university or college or a teacher or a librarian, or I can proctor personally using Zoom. So I can video proctor you as well. But we can, we'll worry about that when we come to it. We're covering nine chapters in this book. Each one of them will have a homework set. We're also going to have two quizzes, which are part of the homework. And that's sort of a new thing that I started this summer in a different class. And I think it works really well because it gives you a chance to really dig in and do a problem 
in the manner that's going to be required of you on the midterm and finals. So it's really more, I mean, it's, it's also a problem in content, but it's also a problem in format to get you ready for the midterm and the final. Um, if on the combination of those elements you have a 90 to 100, you're guaranteed an A. And if you get over an 80 but less than 90, a B, and so forth. Um, in a class like this, in order to progress to the next level, you will probably need a C, not a C minus, but I almost never find that to be a problem. If students do the elements of the class, you'll probably get an A or a B. So it's not like at the end of the class, people are hanging on hoping that they get a C instead of a C minus. You'll know well in advance that you are doing much better than that. Um, I do want all of your homework scanned and submitted through Moodle, even if you are here in class with me. Uh, the reason for that is just organizational. That way I have all of your homework together. I really like to grade all of your homework at the same time because it keeps me more consistent. So uh, there, the way that it looks is this on our Moodle page. For example, see I don't have any content yet, but here with uh, kinematics of particles for chapter 11, uh, you'll submit and there's a, a due date for the submission. The time that it accepts uh, submissions to is not midnight, it's five minutes to midnight. So, but you can still submit late, and if you submit three minutes, I mean, I hope you won't play chicken with Moodle, but it's not gonna cut you off and say you're not gonna submit. If you're five minutes late or 10 minutes late, I'm not going to give you any penalty. I really don't give penalties for reasonable amounts of lateness, but this is a schedule that keeps us on track. So we do um, our homework, turn it in by Friday, August 30th, which is next Friday, and then we move on to uh, chapter 12. So every day when we come to class, or if you're not in class with me, when you do your homework, you may have homework, you won't have any homework tonight. We have homework Friday and Monday and next Wednesday. So you have three homeworks that you'll all keep together and then you'll submit on together as a single file. But every day that we come to class or in between class if you're not here, uh, you, if you have trouble, you need help with your homework, you can visit with me or you can ask at the beginning of class. You can come to my office or you can ask at the beginning of class. So we'll keep you caught up and squared away. So I would like it in an ideal world if every day has about the same workload in this class. I mean, I know sometimes you, know, you have to push things and get them done at the end, except I won't say your name on camera, but you're, you're very good at getting your homework in and being caught up all the time. So that's a great thing. But um, some people, you know, things just get busy and you get a little bit behind or whatever, and that's fine. But I will assign stuff so that you'll never have a big clot of homework to be doing on a particular day. Um, then after we do uh, the, two, the first two chapters, we'll have that, that quiz, which like I said, is part of the homework grade. Um, and it'll be a timed quiz. The way that it works is uh, when you open it up, you'll have 30 minutes or 45 minutes to do a problem and then they're just, I'll ask you for certain elements in the problem and you'll write that out on a piece of paper and then you will uh, take a picture of it or scan it and email it to me within that same hour. So you'll have some answers that'll come in through Moodle and some that will be scanned to me and emailed to me. So that's the deal with that. All right, um, so I guess that's kind of like the main points. Now, as far as the rest of this goes, uh, these are some universal elements from the Northwest College syllabi that basically uh, let you know that if you have a disability, if you have any ADAA accommodations, we'll make those for you. Anything to make the, com the classroom more comfortable for you. So if you have something that helps you, like one thing that a lot of students really need is a quiet place when we're taking exams. And in a class like this, it's probably not going to be an issue, but if there's something in the classroom that bothers you and you need to be like alone when you take a quiz or a test, we can arrange for that to happen. I'm sorry, not quizzes. Quizzes you'll be taking at home, so you'll be able to set up your own environment however you want. But with an exam, if you need something like a little bit more privacy or whatever, we can set you up so that that works for you. Um, as far as our Title IX policies, we, uh, Northwest College, once again, is committed to not discriminating uh, based on gender, sex, or gender identity. And also we have a lot of other, any protected class, we're committed to not discriminating based on that. So 
Uh, there's a formal reporting process, but anything that happens, if it is uncomfortable for you, please let me know and I will remedy that situation. Um, we also uh, have a respect for diversity. We kind of actually love that. And uh, we, we like to have people of all different, uh, all different interests and backgrounds uh, in class and on campus. So once again, um, we, we recognize that uh, that promotes a good learning environment. So if anything is ever uncomfortable for you, uh, or if you ever notice anything that's happening, uh, if you let me know, we will address it immediately. So make sure that everybody's getting a fair shake in class. All right, the last part is uh, the withdrawal procedure. Now in this class, like I said, I'll be here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'll be doing my lectures live like this and then posting them up to Moodle. That means that you are never obligated to be here. Um, you may have come in here when I'm recording by myself and I'm basically like talking to myself. So I really love it if people are here. So I hope you will come. But if you're not able to come, that's fine. Because I do exactly the same thing by myself. It looks a little strange, but you know, you do what you gotta do. Um, so anyway, I may not, if hopefully nobody will have to drop or withdraw. But if you do have to drop or withdraw, please talk to me or talk to the Enrollment Services Office about going through the formal process. Because if you just quit doing your work, uh, and I would say normally quit coming to class, but since you're going to be watching videos online sometimes, I won't really know if you quit coming to class. But if you just quit, you'll get an F, and that's a terrible thing on your transcript. Now, in engineering classes, once again, that's usually not a problem. Everybody usually has a level of maturity that that doesn't happen. But just to let you know, if you need to go through the process, if the class just is not coming together for you for reasons inside or outside the class, uh, let's get it off your transcript so it's not going to hurt you in the future. All right. Uh, and aside from that, we have a policy about academic dishonesty. And academic dishonesty can fall into two different categories. One is cheating, where you borrow material from other people. And one is trafficking, where you give your work to other people. Now, in my classes, I don't, somebody's gonna fool me with this someday, but I would say you almost cannot cheat on your homework. In other words, if you're working together in a group, and if you're doing a couple of problems each and then sharing each other's work, that's fine with me. As long as the work comes to me in every individual's handwriting. So in other words, um, if one person in the class does four problems and the other person in the class does four problems, I still want each one of those two people to turn in eight problems in their own handwriting. Uh, but as long as you do that, you can't really cheat on the homework. Now, exams are a solo endeavor. You know, so in exams we do by ourselves. Quizzes, they're timed, but if you use outside help, it's really not a problem to me either, as long as you can get it done in that prescribed amount of time. Just a little bit different assessment format. But with the exams, uh, you cannot use your cell phone, and you cannot use a calculator that has internet capability. You can only use calculators that are non-internet capable. And um, those of you who plan to become professional engineers uh, will have to go through a, a couple of tests, one of which is called the Fundamentals of Engineering uh, exam, and one is called uh, the Professional Engineering exam. And this exam is, uh, can become very important to your career. You would take the EFI exam usually when you're a junior or senior in college, and then it used to be traditionally that people would take the PE exam four years out. But now you can take the exam while you're still in college or right after you graduate, and then do the other elements of uh, requirements for the PE exam over the next four years. But in any case, when you take these exams, you are not allowed to use an internet capable calculator. And there's actually a list that the National Society of Professional, of Engineering Examiners allows you to use. So if you have a calculator that you're comfortable with, I would just continue to use it. But if you need to purchase a calculator, I would look at what's required or what is allowed on the FE exam because you're going to be using that calculator for a very important event or two in your life. 
and so it's good to start with that. They also have lots of good re review materials and stuff. So um, and that's just something to keep in mind in the long run. But don't go out and buy a new calculator if you have one that you like. As long as it's not on the internet, uh, as long as it isn't capable of accessing the internet, you will be just fine. All right. Uh, we also have a bunch of resources. Uh, we have health resources and tutoring resources. Uh, we have, if anybody needs uh, childcare, we have that available. We have great, a great library. We have the six Project Succeed or TRIO program, which if you, are, if you meet certain categories of, uh, if you meet certain criteria, you get, you're eligible for a lot of support through TRIO. So it's a really neat program. Um, we also have uh, some emergency response guide here, uh, including evacuation. If the building, okay, so I want, there's a couple of different things. If the building is ever evacuated, which I've been here 23 years, it's never been evacuated, but you know, we need to be safe. Uh, we meet at the bell tower from this side of the building, or we meet in the back parking lot, back, well, kind of right, like right there, that little plaza um, out back. And that's so that we can document everybody. And we go through drills like this to make sure that we know how to handle this uh, if anything were to happen. And I think that's extremely important, but I also would like to state that, in my opinion, Northwest College is an extraordinarily safe campus, and I, I do not worry about these things too much, but I still want to be prepared. So uh, if we, the other part of a notification, they found that in emergencies, that one of the most important things to a successful outcome is that everybody is notified. And one of the ways that we're notified here is we have the rave system, the texting system. So if something happens, um, you'll get alert on rave. So during a test, so please, you know, like in class today, if you want to keep your cell phone with you, I think that's a super idea. Um, during tests when you're not allowed to have your cell phone, I will have my cell phone and I'm also on the rave alert. So we're not going to be surprised by anything that we don't want to be surprised by. Uh, so anyway, those are just some thoughts. And if you have any concerns about uh, the safety of this classroom, um, just let me know. Like I said, I feel, I feel quite safe, so I'm not a bit worried. But, um, but you know, we want everybody to be safe and to make sure that they feel safe. And as usual, if you notice something out of line, you need to just talk to people because we do have a system in place for handling that. All right, so uh, we have gone through the essence of the syllabus. We've gone through accessing um, the dynamics uh, page. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about for a moment is the homework template. Uh, I'm really committed to teaching you guys not only how to do the work and how to think in dynamics, uh, but also to turn in work that your upper division teachers and your uh, future employers will respect. And one of the things that as an engineer, uh, as a practicing professional that we need to do is to turn in work that looks like we were really not trying to hide anything, that we're really showing everybody exactly what our thought processes were. And that is the purpose of the template. The first thing is I've put this on a piece of engineering comp paper, which is the green quadril paper. Uh, you don't, your paper doesn't have to be green, but I do like the quadril. So uh, please don't do your homework, especially on anything that pulls out of a notebook. You know, anything that you turn in has to have a smooth edge and um, some sort of a grid on the paper. Now, I don't think that they have this over at the bookstore just yet. If you don't have any, and I may have, I looked for a minute and I couldn't find any in my office, but um, you can order this off of Amazon, or I'm sure you can order it from Staples or anything like that as well. But um, if you look, ENGI Engineering uh, Comp Paper, Let's see if it'll come up. Yeah, so you can order it. Uh, from Amazon or anyone else. And since we don't have a homework assignment due for uh, a week and a half or something, you'll definitely have time to get it here. Probably 100 sheets will get you through this class. Um, some people like to do their homework on just regular paper and then copy it over to engineering comp paper, which is a good way to save paper in case you make mistakes. Uh, you, can, you can do that. The, what I really like to see is at the top of the paper, every 
the front page at least, uh, the due date, the course name, and the chapter number, or other if it's like a math pretest or just something that indicates uh, what the homework is from. Then your last name and your first name on every single page. And in the corner, uh, the bottom number is the total number of pages of your homework. So of course you can't fill that in until you're completely done. And then which page this is of the assignment. Then as far as constructing the problems, um, you would write the problem number, uh, a limb, just sort of separate, kind of off to the left. And then you do a little identification problem. In engineering, um, all problems are essay problems, right? I mean, it's all, this is all, they're all long. You'll notice like if you're in a math class, you might have 60 problems in a night. In engineering class, you'll have four problems in a night. And that's because, it's not because engineering is easier, it's because they're longer. So uh, I need to have a lot more information from you because I want to follow your train of thought. And so you do a problem identification, so you sort of restate the problem. If it's appropriate, draw a sketch or a free body diagram. State the theory or principle that you're using. List any assumptions, and then you do the solutions. And a lot of people really love to skip down to do the solution because that's where we're, that's our wheelhouse, right? In our wheelhouse to do the math. Um, so, but that's really step number uh, five in this process. Then write your answer somewhat removed off to the right. And an answer is always a number with units. And I have indicated that I like you to use the proper number of significant figures. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm not like in chemistry class where that's like a big deal. But if your calculator gives you eight decimals and you're only measuring two uh, inches, keep it in mind. So within a decimal, with, within one or two places, uh, please keep your sig figs about correct. Then when you're done, separate it from the next problem. You do not necessarily have to draw a line across. I like to do that because then I can get more problems on the same page. But make sure that you can clearly distinguish problem first from problem second. And um, I do require this for full credit. I will critique your, your homework format. Now, you don't have to start every problem on the top of a page if it's appropriate. To start the second problem halfway down or three quarters of the way down, that's fine, okay? But just make sure that I can identify where one one starts and where one two stops or starts one stops and starts. Um, the thing about uh, the thing about this is, in this room, we are all um, engineers and practicing students. We're good, you know, you're good students, and I can follow your work. But when you get out into industry, you may be presenting your work to people who came out of a business background or a human resource background. And so we need to practice presenting very technical information to less technical people. And sometimes they're the ones who get to decide if you get money to do your projects or not. So it can be very, very important. Uh, so that's, that's the reason that I like to do it this way. And then I start working on it right away. All righty, do you guys have any questions for me? Except for the fact that we do not meet at noon, we meet at 11 o'clock, and I will fix that and get it reposted right away. All right, so for Friday, uh, please have access to a textbook, whether if you keep it electronically, that's fine. And we'll get started in uh, chapter 11, which is kinematics. Those of you that have had uh, physics will have seen this a little bit before, a little bit different presentation, uh, but it'll be very interesting. and. We'll have a good time with it. So anytime in between class that you have a question or a problem, please come see me and we'll take care of it right away. So, all right. Well, thank you for your time. That was half hour. Uh, so we had a nice short lecture today. And, uh, and, and that's it. So you guys have a great day. And we will uh, see you Friday, if not before. <laughs>